Good evening and welcome to DXB Today. Tonight we are talking our oceans, our reefs, our beaches, a whole life aquatic. So it's going to be a good show. And what else is coming up on today's show? Let's find out. We're sharing the top five activities that you definitely need to explore for seaside adventures with your friends or family. And R&B rapper Rays joins us in studio for a wonderful performance. Boys, I'm so excited to have you both here next to me. Good to have you, Ash. <clears throat> like on the show tonight, we're talking all things outdoorsy, right? I personally don't consider myself to be a super outdoorsy person, but I mean, we're talking beaches, top activities you can enjoy in the beach side, um, marine diversity, and of course, oysters. So which one of this, you know, rings a bell to either of you? I mean, I absolutely love the sea. I mean, I think we've all got a favorite beach. Mine is uh, Kite Beach <coughs> or Secret Beach, but I haven't been to Secret Beach for a while because they closed it for a bit. Do you know if it's opened up again? I don't know, mate, it's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I just, I love all that. Now, I will be talking about to some of the guests about one of my favorite activities, which is jet skiing. I suspect it's probably not the best <laughs> for the environment, but it is a lot of fun. I love spending time in the water. I was really impressed with your recent episode that you've done. I'm like impressed it. with everything you do. Uh, no, <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you. When you were doing the, the rowing, do you remember? Oh, uh, yes. The last bottle. Yeah, that was yeah, cool. Paddleboarding over at Ignite as well. Yeah. I want to be on the water now. The water is beautiful. Do you, like, do you like water sports? I love water sports. And this is one thing <laughs> that before uh, there was a lot more jet skis and everything happening in Dubai. Uh, and you used to be able to go so far. I used to go, I used to go to Fijera. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, just take my jet ski and just go. But now it's all changed a little bit. But uh, it's still fun. Well, my favorite water sport is taking long showers. But our guest co-host today has a lot to share with us. So let's find out who she is. My name is Natalie Hoare and I'm the founder of ASRAC. I can't wait to converse with you soon. Yes, Natalie will join us right here in the studio in just a little bit. But first, from swimming and paddleboarding to even cycling near the seaside, here are fun activities that you should definitely check out down the beaches in Dubai. Take a look at this. Each beach in Dubai has its own unique charm and character. Aside from swimming, there are plenty of activities to enjoy with friends and family. The Emirates Beach boasts fine sand with some offering amenities like beach umbrellas, sand loungers and clean shower rooms. For fitness enthusiasts, Kite Beach offers a scenic cycle track perfect for a seaside ride. Feeling adventurous? Learn to paddleboard surf or even kite surf with expert instructors. Prefer staying on the sand? Enjoy beach volleyball, football, frisbee or yoga. Mamzar Beach is ideal for a delightful barbecue picnic with designated grilling areas. For more privacy, you can also rent beach cabins. Believe it or not, you can go shopping or even watch a film on the beach. That's the area opposite JBR where you could also park up and hang out. Or if you're in a playful mood, try out Aquafun, the world's largest inflatable water park. When hunger strikes, indulge in a variety of delicious cuisines at beachfront restaurants. Or if you've brought your own snacks, make it a picnic. And remember La Mer, the gorgeous beach destination in Jumeirah 1? It is now undergoing a facelift and will be unveiled as J1 in September so if you're heading to a Dubai beach near you anytime soon, here's a helpful checklist. Sunscreen, sunglasses, change of clothes, a towel, a picnic mat, a water bottle. There are plenty of water stations everywhere, courtesy of the Dubai Can Initiative. Happy swimming. Now, our co-host for tonight is a founder addressing the challenges in marine conservation in this region. She's doing that through the non-profit organization, ASRAC, helping to safeguard the biodiversity of our oceanic ecosystems for years to come. Please welcome to DXB today, Sofa, Natalie Hoare. Thank you very much, Lane. Good to see you, Natalie. Great to be here. So, your organization, it sounds like it's doing amazing, wonderful things. How did it come together? 
ASRAC came about out of a necessity to continue doing marine conservation. I had had quite some success in Australia uh, through local um, campaigns and also through global campaigns. And I was trying to, with the move to Dubai, open up something very similar or do something similar here. And after knocking on doors and emailing and making numerous phone calls for four months, I could not get a door to open. And so I was so passionate about wanting to save and conserve the oceans that I thought, okay, I've started a not-for-profit in Australia before, so I'll do it all over again in the UAE. And the rest is history. Nice one. Mm. So, so what do you think is like the, the best way to move things forward? Is it education, understanding, so let people understand what is in our oceans first, you know what I mean? Like sure. there's, certain, there's certain marine life that is like specified for here and we need to conserve. Yeah, so education and awareness definitely plays a role. And so as a scuba diver and a, a snorkeler, I actually didn't know what was under the surface of the waves. And no one really knows until you actually start putting a mask on your face and seeing what life is underneath. And that's where the passion came from, to conserve and protect this environment. But I think we need to go outside just education and awareness into action. Because once you put the two together, then you've really gelled. Like, so when you plant a mangrove, then you understand more about that plant. Then you, that the education and awareness comes in as as well and so you've got both working together that hopefully is something that you take on for future and not just once when you learn and then you forget like you maybe when you were at school <laughs> Na Natalie, your whole message is that um, you know everyone needs to work towards this. It's not just people who are passionate about marine diversity or concerned citizens, but you need the government and corporations to sign off on the same hymn sheet. Is that correct? Absolutely. So when it comes to marine conservation, the reason we haven't got a solution right now is because we're not singing off the same hymn sheet throughout the whole of the globe. So we need countries, over 200 countries in the world, all singing from the same hymn sheet, They're all the governments, all the corporates, all the individuals. It's, it's quite overwhelming when you think about it, and that's why we haven't got a solution yet. So when you get uh, an entity like ASRAC, what you're doing is making a, a impact whereby it becomes a movement. So it's not just one individual doing one thing, it's bringing numerous individuals coming together and being able to make a difference. And that's what the world needs right now, is individuals coming together until we're all singing off the same hymn sheet. Well, Natalie, I have to say, I love the fact that you're wearing blue. And yes, Azraq thank means you. blue in Arabic, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it um, does. And going back to what you were talking about, how we all need to work together to help cons uh, conserve our oceans, what are the things that we can do? Because I just mentioned how I love jet skiing, but I suspect it's probably not the best thing. So what sort of things do we do? We probably don't know we're doing any harm that might be affecting the environment and the ocean. Sure, so jet skiing obviously is one of the things. We can enjoy the ocean, but we need to be mindful of it. So noise pollution is one of the things from jet skis and how does that impact the ocean? So education awareness comes in there. But so there's so many issues that are, are, are a concern. And so it can be climate change, it can be overfishing, it can be coastal development and habitat destruction. Those things are really big. And so as an individual, how can I do anything about that? But pollution, when we talk about plastics, we can all do something about pollution, right? So this is why ASRAC was formed, was because I wanted to show how we can, as an individual, <coughs> all make a difference. So if you were today, today go and say, I'm never going to use a plastic straw again, or I'm never going to use a plastic bag again, it may sound like it's a very small action, and what am I doing? How is that changing the world globally? But you may not be able to change the world globally. That's not your role. But you may be able to make a difference to a marine life or someone else's life by educating someone else on a topic, which is all about education and awareness. Mm. Definitely. Um, speaking of marine life, the UAE does have a wide variety of marine life visiting its waters. Some of them include whale sharks, sunfish, orcas and endemic dolphins. I'm going to have to ask my six-year-old what some of these are. She absolutely loves sea creatures. How can we make the waters of the UAE more safe for more marine life to sort of come in? Yeah, so um, the beauty of the oceans is, is phenomenal. And we've got such amazing life. We're so very lucky to be in the UAE and have the diversity of life that we have. So when it comes to protecting them, whilst we can obviously be reducing our plastics, we can also do things like planting mangroves that impacts the climate, that reduces climate and the temperatures, the warming temperatures. We can also go and 
potentially go and restore coral reefs with ASRAC, which is what we do at ASRAC as well. Um, go and do beach cleanups, or if you're a scuba diver, clean some of the debris that way as you're scuba diving. These things also make a difference. So it's finding those, it sounds like small things, but it's finding those small things that, oh, you know, I actually feel comfortable doing this. So for me, for example, convenience is obviously going to be an issue. If I, if I need to go shopping and I, I need to grab a whole things and I don't have money to pay for a, a bag or whatever, I don't have my spare bags on me, plastic bags is potentially going to be the answer that I go to. But if I'm focused on reducing them, rather than completely stopping, I'm making a difference. Um, for me, I've got filters on my taps, so I don't have any plastic water bottles in my house at all because I prefer to use filtered water. Uh, all of the clothes that I try and wear are sustainable clothing because we've got things like microfibers coming off our clothes, going through the washing machines and the sewage and then entering into the ocean. So it's those really small things and sometimes we don't even know that we're impacting the ocean. We're just having fun on a jet ski. <laughs> and yeah, we are having right. fun now. Right? Yeah, right, we are having fun. <laughs> but I mean, look, look, this is this is amazing. I remember one day actually having fun on the oceans we were filming and there was this massive shark. It was crazy. It was like one of those leopard sharks or something. Uh, yeah. Just like, what is that? Um, and it, But I've never seen it again. Right. You know? um, yes. And this is something that is very rare to see. Mm. Kind of like Jack Cousteau in uh, Life Aquatic, one of my favorite films, by the way. Okay. Um, and. Um, and this is the thing that we really need to understand what is out there. Uh, but how can the public get involved? How can we help you and, and help the organisation? Yeah, so it's a really great question. And if, so if you have the passion, so when it comes to wanting to do something, usually you're looking at your morals and your values. What do you stand for as a person? Because um, I think at the moment it becomes so overwhelming that everybody's just putting their head in the sand and it's easier just to do nothing. And I think nothing, is not, nothing cannot be the answer. We have to do something. And so whilst it feels overwhelming, it comes back again to those small things. Cigarette butts is an issue for the oceans as well. And we're so, it's, so, it's such a habit now. People just smoke their cigarette. A lot of the times they're putting on the, on the ground and they're stomping the cigarette butt out. They still do that. It is a standard <laughs> method of, of disposing of cigarette butts. Yet we don't realise that those, those butts go where? Where do they go? You know, we have to think more past, well, oh, this is just my action today. What is the overall um, <coughs> impact? Natalie, thank you so much. Uh, we have an entire show to get through to where we would definitely like to learn more from you on the importance of conserving our oceanic environment. So please stay with us. Fabulous, thank you. Coming up, we find out how oyster farming is helping protect our oceans while also improving water quality with the founders of Dibba Bay Oysters, right here. <laughs>